mid-morning at Salisbury Hospital and three ambulances are coming in in quick succession. Stuart, the nurse in charge of A&E, must quickly shift patients around to free up space. I'm going to move the Freddy's trauma into two. Oh, OK. Because um, I've got a feeling this one's going to need to go into recess. Sally has been here for more than 17 hours, waiting for a bed on a ward to become free. I was seen within, oh gosh, it must have been half a minute of coming through the doors of A&E. But unfortunately, Sally also has recent experience of how the strain on the NHS is showing. Extremely sadly, my husband died a month ago. And on occasion, uh, I had to call the ambulance out for him. When he had a stroke, they arrived very quickly, within five minutes, and they were marvellous. On two other occasions, he was left lying on the bathroom floor one night from one o'clock in the morning until half past eight the next day when I actually had to go out and find a neighbour to help me. It's not a situation that, that we really ought to, ought to be dealing with. Across England last month, a and E's saw record numbers and Salisbury was no different. People are struggling to get access to healthcare, so if their perception of emergency may be completely different to my perception of emergency. But they, and if they can't get access, they will come to an emergency department. I think it is becoming more stressful and more challenging. The A&E daily meeting throws up another common issue, the shortage of staff. We are light on key skills going into the weekend for nursing on nights. Which... And it's the same story one floor down on Spire Ward, where the sister in charge says she is short of staff almost daily. Staff, they have been stressed a lot and they we have sickness and we have problems with recruitment. It worries me because our major worry is our patient safety and patient's care. Yet almost one third of patients who are being cared for here are medically fit to leave. We are caring for in excess of 120 people every day who are ready to be discharged, but we've not been able to secure their ongoing care. Um, I want to say and pay testament to our social work colleagues, we work really closely, really well, but the sector is pretty overwhelmed and there are some systemic issues that we need to help our social care colleagues address. On the more immediate agenda, next week's nurses strike. Back in A&E, Angela has already made her mind up about that. I'm behind them 100%. It's been a long, long time of underfunding and under-supporting, and sometimes people have to take dramatic action. And despite all the challenges this hospital is facing, it is still delivering. I honestly was prepared that I was going to have to sit on there, you know, an ambulance, and then wait in... But not a bit of it, straight in, first-class treatment all the way. So, thank you, Salisbury. Well, let's pick up with Cathy, who joins us live in Salisbury tonight, where she spent the day. Fascinating, Cathy, to look inside the hospital and, I suppose, to see just how hard everyone is trying at the moment to make things work. But we should say as well, there were some good figures in those uh, released today, weren't there? Hi, Dan. Well, uh, yes, I suppose you could call them good, although I suppose perhaps a better word would be a sense of relief about some figures, and that is that the number of people in England uh, for the NHS who are trying to get a routine operation has finally, in November, fallen from a record high the month before. Uh, I think fair to say, as I said, more of a glimmer of good hope, though, because... Um, it would have been shocking, to be honest, and really concerning if that number hadn't fallen by now, considering the amount of effort that's been given to clearing that backlog. Here in Salisbury, for example, uh, they are about to try to build a whole new ward for that if they get planning permission. That backlog still standing at 7.19 million, a figure that continues to sound every time you, you hear it. And as I hope you saw from my report, there's still this dual pressure, emergency admissions on the one side, the inability to discharge on the other, that keeps constantly squeezing down the number of beds that can be given over to routine operations. Add in COVID and flu and we still have a perfect storm of problems. Cathy, thank you. You're right, it is a glimmer, but we'll hold on to anything we can get at the moment.